Mm. Sports on ABC7 brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. All right, sports fans, Cubs fans, here's all the analysis with Rafer. Yeah, well, the Cubs are happy. Jeff Samarj is happy. Cub fans are happy. Everybody's happy but the cynical media types. <laughs> you know, Cub fans have been wandering the desert for over a century, so what's one more year? Most believe that Theo will lead them to the promised land, and they're giving him an A for sending Jeff Samarja to the A's for their top prospects. Theo called the trade a, quote, no-brainer and something that the team had to do. So Carlos Villanueva stepped in Samarja's place in Washington, and judging from the looks of this, folks, it's going to be a long season. Villanueva did not last long, giving up back-to-back -back RBI doubles here in the third to make it 3-0. Newly called up Chris Russin, replaced him in the third, and he didn't fare any better. With two on Russin, wild pitch. That makes it 5 nothing. Nats. Cubs gave up six runs in the third. And the Nationals win by a football score of 13 nothing. Speaking of football, RG3 was there, and oh baby, football season cannot come soon enough. Cubs in 2017. It was quite a pitcher's duel on the south side. White Sox lefty Jose Quintana more than held his own against King Felix, but... Robin's got to be saying, my kingdom for a closer, please. Still pooped from the 4th of July, folks. Well, this game was exhausting, but Quintana keeps raising his Q rating. Struck out the side of the second, shut him out over seven and two-thirds, four hits allowed, ten strikeouts. Scoreless until Diane Vicieto in the eighth inning knocks in Connor Gillespie. The Sox are up two zip, but in the ninth, up one, two outs, two on for Seattle, and Zach Putnam gives up the tying run. We go to extras. Now the 14th inning. One on for Ronald Belisario, and he gives up the ground rule double, or rather Belisario on the hill, gives that up to Brad Miller. And that's your go-ahead run. Mariners win it 3-2. to two. Well, you know, we just didn't get it done. I mean, right now we're at the point where we're using different people in that spot, and, you know, every once in a while those guys are going to give up runs. And, and when it does, it's going to look like a blown save. But, you know, we're rotating around guys, uh, you know, until somebody really emerges. Anytime you... You give up runs and they uh, tie it up, it, it shows you. And, you know, we're not the only ones. It's, it happens throughout the league. Everybody's going to ask questions like that. But we, we got guys that have been getting it done. So, you know, this is what we have. And if you've got a fever for the World Cup, we've got your prescription. It's not more cowbell, but reaping the benefits was the Netherlands and Argentina as both advanced to the semifinals. Get your game face on, folks. The Dutch, Costa Rica, scoreless. Until stoppage time, the Dutch on the attack. It looks like they're going to score, but Costa Rica holds them off. So we go to extra time, and then to penalty kicks. The Dutch, they went ahead on PKs, and then they send in substitute goalkeeper Tim Krul. And Krul is kind to the Dutch, but Krul to Costa Rica. That stop gives the Dutch the victory. They will play Argentina next. And speaking of, life's a beach at the World Cup. That's the viewing party in Rio for Argentina and Belgium. <laughs> Keep your shirt on, folks. In the eighth minute, Argentina's on the move. Off the deflection is Gonzalo Higuain making it 1-0. And Argentina wins by that score. Congratulations to them. Women's final at Wimbledon, Petra Kvitova and Eugenie Bouchard. And unfortunately, this one wasn't even close. A total route for Kvitova. She's on the bottom of your screen. She won the first set 6-3 and then blanked Bouchard's six love in the second set. It is her second Wimbledon championship. She's unstoppable on the grass. The match only lasted 55 minutes. Briefly, Luol Dang met with the Heat today. The sky is in Seattle. I'll have highlights later in the show. Racing at Daytona was postponed until tomorrow because of weather. And Billy Hurley III has a two-shot lead at the Greenbrier Classic. I'll have highlights of that later as well. First stage of the Tour de France, and what a sight to behold. Could you please get out of the way, folks? I'm riding here, and this was a sight. Final 500 meters, Mark Cavendish goes down. Nasty crash, clearing the way for Marcel Cattell. He takes the yellow, but Cavendish hurt with a dislocated shoulder. He did finish the stage, but he might have to leave the race. He'll make that decision in a couple of hours, but uh, yeah, wow. what a trooper. That is some serious drama, Tour de France. Mm. All right, see you in a little bit. Thanks.